Good morning, everybody. Uh, Dr. Sal Pacella from San Diego, California, and I'm joined by my uh, two good friends and colleagues, Dr. Sam Jadurakar from Dallas, Texas, and Dr. Sam Ree from uh, Paramus, New Jersey. Um, you can see on our screen our Instagram handles. That's at Sam Jadurakar, at San Diego Plastic Surgeon, and at Bergen Cosmetic. How are you guys today? We're doing wonderful. How are you doing? Fantastic. Got a nice morning here in lovely San Diego. How's the weather for you guys? Starting to cool down a little bit? <laughs> Not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. Uh, it was, yeah. <laughs> it's been busy. <laughs> All right. Well, if you don't get outside, it's still important to take care of your skin, even though these guys are living in a coffin. Okay. <laughs> So today's, uh, today's uh, episode will be about skincare and new skincare technologies. We have a very special guest, which we'll uh, introduce in a few minutes. But first, I'd like to do a little disclaimer. Uh, this show is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. This show is for informational purposes only. Treatment and results may vary based upon the circumstances, situation, and medical judgment after appropriate discussion. Always seek the advice of your surgeon or other qualified health provider with any questions that you may have regarding medical care. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking advice because of something in the show. Now, with that, I'd like to hand it over to Dr. Uh, Sam Jajirkar in Dallas. Uh, here we go. Thanks, Thanks Dr. Vichella. So uh, today we are uh, very, very um, fortunate to have a special guest. And what I'll, before I even introduce Nina, I'm going to basically just sort of let you know that as surgeons, I think we know a lot about cutting on people, but we tend not to know a lot about other aspects of beauty regimens, of, of anti-aging regimens, unless we really seek out additional training. And um, there's a bias sometimes that we have towards surgery, and it's really over only the last few years that I've really gained an appreciation for the huge benefits that both preventative care and non-surgical technologies can have for helping patients with both anti-aging and reversing some of the signs of aging. And, and most of what I have learned has come from, from our guest, who is Nina Owen. So for the last five years, more than five years, I've had the great pleasure of working with Nina. She's actually the regional director of Epicenter Skin Care and Laser Center, which I will admit is affiliated with our practice at Dallas Plastic Surgery Institute, but really is one of Dallas's premier skin care and laser centers. She has more than 20 years in the business. She's a graduate of Temple University. Um, she has actually served as the past president of the Society of Plastic Surgical uh, skin care specialist. So she really has an expertise in this and is my go-to person. If I have questions, which is frequent about what, what would be a good non-invasive technology for my patient or the right skincare regimen, she'll either herself or with uh, one of her excellent staff at Epicenter will get us, uh, will get us hooked up. And so with that, I'd love to bring out Nina uh, to start picking her brain. Hi. Good morning, Hello. Nina. Good morning. Thank you again so much for joining us. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So, um, you know, one of the things that um, I find myself having conversations with patients with um, a lot is just how to formulate a skincare regimen. It seems like a lot of patients will go to an expensive department store, spend several hundred dollars on skincare products, you know, have whatever the, the person at the counter has them buy, and every month they change what they're doing without any rhyme or reason. When you're, when you're seeing a new patient, particularly in a place like Dallas or San Diego, where Dr. Pacella is, and they're in a, um, you know, an environment where they're in the sun all the time. What are the sort of basic steps that you'll have a patient think about when they're starting their skincare? Well, I always believe to have, um, there's a course, core products to have. So I always love to tell patients to get on at least an antioxidant, a great retinol and a sunscreen. Those are your basics for me. Okay. Um, when I'm speaking with a patient, um, cleansers, toners, um, you know, growth factors, growth factors are great, but the core is to get on a great antioxidant, um, a retinol, retin-A, retinol, or, and a sunscreen. Okay. So, um, so let's say, Let's say you're talking to a 40-something-year-old plastic surgeon who uh, is out in the sun a lot and surfs all the time, like <laughs> Dr. Pacella. Yeah, I think you surf, what, five times a week, probably? Yeah, it was just <laughs> <laughs> three times a week, baby. Three, three, times, three, a week. Time, three times a week. And he's, he's like, okay, you just, you've just said all of these things to me. I still have no idea how to, how to buy my – how to start my regimen. So, Look, you know, this is how much I don't know. I just, I just wrote these all down. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so antioxidant. What does that mean? Because antioxidants a thing I learned in chemistry. And um, right. what, so how does how do I get a skincare product that's going to be a great antioxidant? What does that mean? Really, it's a vitamin C product. Um, that's what I highly recommend, vitamin C. And what that does is helps the skin protects you from free radicals, protects you from the sun. Um, it helps stop cell damage. So, okay. the, of course, we know environment, going out in the sun, surfing five days a week, you could possibly get a lot of sun exposure. So using that antioxidant, the vitamin C, is giving you added protection along with that sunscreen. So if you use a vitamin, just say a vitamin C product consistently for four to six weeks, it's giving you that added protection with your sunscreen. You still need a sunscreen, but it's just, it almost starts building every day that you use it to give you that extra protection. Okay. And so the thing that I've always, because I'll, in full disclosure, Nina, largely through my wife, I, I'll see products kind of show up in my house. <laughs> And, um, and I don't know when to use it. I don't know how to work it into that. I basically am a guy who might wash my face with a cleanser at night, maybe put some moisturizer on there, but then somewhere in that regimen, I have to figure out when to use a great vitamin C product, when to use a retinol, um, when to use one of these growth factor serum products. So how, like, you know, it's, it's, just, it's confusing sometimes, you know, and, and, and I'm a plastic surgeon. So, um, like if if you're trying to guide a patient, how do they pick the right cleanser? Is there is there one cleanser that fits all patients, for instance? Well, I mean, there's all different skin types. You have dry, mm -hmm. normal, combination, oily. So, you know, it just depends on the patient. A lot okay. of times somebody that is a little bit more dehydrated, maybe a little bit more mature skin, they're going to go with a cream cleanser. Okay. That's where I would take my patient. Oh, let's go to the cream cleansers. Um a lot of patients that have a little bit more oil in their skin, you may want to put them on a gel cleanser or somebody that has a little bit of acne, maybe an exfoliating cleanser that has a little bit of salicylic acid in it. Okay. So there's so many different kind of cleansers. Uh, you really just have to get with your patient, find out what their skincare needs are, figure out what their skin type is, and then you can really pick the correct cleanser for them. So, um, and that is incredibly elucidating actually that I just learned a lot more about cleansers than I ever knew. <laughs> I had always sort of been taught um, that maybe the next step in the regimen might be a toner. But to me, toner sort of conjured up these images of these products that dry out your skin that are, um, you know, an astringent. Um, is that, is that true? Uh, is there, do patients need a toner? Well, I mean, they say that toners help uh, with the pH balance of the skin. So, you know, I'm not a huge toner person, um, but there are patients that you can put them on like a calming toner. Um, they now have the little wipes that come uh, as a toner instead of the traditional toner you put on a cotton ball. So the wipes now have a little bit of glycolic acid, so it helps exfoliate the skin a little bit, a little bit of cellular turnover. Um, so it just, it, that also depends on the patient. Okay. Um, I personally, uh, do not use a toner every now and again, if it's sitting there, I'll slap it on, but, uh, it really depends on the patient. If they have a little bit more oil in their skin, I tend to go towards some of the toners, uh, that have the pads that they could just wipe on their skin, AM and PM. Okay. Um, somebody that has oily skin, they like that. They feel like they're really getting that excess, uh, oil off their, off their skin. Would would this be the point of the of a skincare regimen where you might add a serum or you might add a, a vitamin C product? Like when when in when in order would a patient do that? So typically you would go cleanser, toner, then in the this is all in the AM, I would put them on the antioxidant next. Okay. That is I always tell patients vitamin C is in the morning, okay. sunshine. So that would be the next product I would put them on. Okay. Um and then, you know, you could be as simple as a moisturizer and a sunscreen at that point. It depends on what your patient is willing to use, AM and PM. There's patients that love just a whole complete skincare line of using, you know, six to seven products, AM and PM. And then some patients just want it simple. 
So you have to work with what they're actually going to do at home when they're, you're not with them. Nina, Nina, can I ask, do you, um, do you see a huge difference between male skin and female skin and sort of the tolerance for regimens that uh, men and women may, may like to use? So for example, you know, I want my forehead to look like Dr. Jujirakar's forehead. He's got, he's got that kind of that blue seal magnum look. <laughs> Botox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, obviously, with men, you know, we're we're just kind of jump in the shower, wash our face, you know, in the shower type of guys. You know, I, I just a lot of my male patients just don't have the tolerance for a lot of product, you know, unless they're very fancy, you know. Right. I would say, you know what? Tell them, you know what? With our male patients, with my husband, put that cleanser in in the uh, shower with you. So you're washing your face with a cleanser in the shower. Um, it could be a gel cleanser. Usually with um, a lot of male skin types, you have thicker skin. Um, you have a little bit more oil to your skin. So put that cleanser in the shower. Um, you're going to wash your face in there anyway, hopefully, right? So uh, use the cleanser, and you can even put a, a polish in there for them, for them to use. Um, that's what my husband has in his shower. He has a cleanser <laughs> and a polish. <laughs> so every now and again, I'm like, are you using that polish in there? What is, what is a polish? I don't even know what a polish is. A polish is something that I tell patients use after you cleanse. Um, there's all kinds of different uh, polishes you can use. There's so many out there. But it's tiny little beads, right? Almost like the old crystals from the microdermabrasion back in the day. Mm -hmm. So uh, you just put it on your face. You massage it in for about 30 to 60 seconds. It's great exfoliation. You rinse. You're nice and fresh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then my um, my next question has to do with retinols, because you had mentioned that sort of earlier on in addition to antioxidants. Who do you think should be using a retinol? Is there a right age to start a retinol? Are there things patients should be, should be wary of if they're going to be taking a retinol? Well, uh, one of the first things that comes to mind with retinols is sun exposure. So it makes you a little bit more photosensitive. So if you have a tennis player, you might not want to put them on a stronger retina, like a retin-A. Um, they've come a long way, I think, with all those retin-As, where, um, you know, with the retinols now, it's a blend. So patients seem to tolerate it a little bit better than they did before. So, um, you know, there's different strengths, but I tell patients that, you know, let's start you out with a lower strength. You want to use that product. If you feel like you're getting irritation and you're using it twice a week and then you stop using it because of the redness, a little bit irritation, you're not getting the benefit of the retinol. I'd rather start them out at a lower percentage, use it more often, and you're getting more of a benefit. Higher strength doesn't necessarily mean you're getting a better end result. And yeah. what's, a, what's, a, what's a low percentage? Uh, a 0.25% of a retinol. So um, with that being said, you know, that's not, that's a blend. So it's a little bit more gentle on the skin. So patients can use it. You know, usually I tell patients, try using it every other day, every other evening before you go to bed. Don't use it in the AM. Um, not that you can't, but just so you have a regimen, antioxidant in the morning, retinol at night. So if you're using it every other day, I mean, I think that's great. And you don't necessarily have to bump that percentage up. Let's see how your skin tolerates what we give you to start. And of course, thicker oily skin can take a little bit more. So you might want to start them at a 0.5%. Do you... Um and and we and I will try to make you av avoid trying to pick sort of one company over another. But um, you know, you have a wealth of knowledge, and I have an advantage in my practice because I can send my patients to see you or your staff, and it's amazing. But let's say you're a patient listening to this podcast, and you've gotten all this information thrown at you. You're like, okay, now I find out I need to find the right cleanser depending on my skin type. I may or may not need a toner. I definitely need an antioxidant. I definitely need a retinol sunscreen's got to fall in there somewhere and we haven't even talked about moisturizer like how do i do all this like is there's a variety of companies that have a complete line that's out there is there is there 
do you have sort of faith in a few companies' lines that they just you're a patient, you go out there, you buy this line, and and you're gonna be you're gonna be taken care of? Or how does a patient maneuver through this through this this, this jungle? Well, I'm of course definitely big on prescription retinols. Um, not that over the counter products um, aren't okay, but you're not getting what you need. You're gonna spend the same amount of money. You might as well come in. Um, to a medical spa, professionals that deal with this every day um, to help with, you know, with the retinols, with your product line. Um, some of the stores, I mean, what they spend in the store and what they spend with us, it's very similar. Similar, If not at the store, it's a little bit more expensive. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it just, it, you know, it really just depends on the patient. So um, skincare lines, I have my favorite for sure. <laughs> Um, and each line, they do have their retinols. So some are a little bit more aggressive than others, even though they're the same percentage. Um, I, we have a lot of great ones and I have my two favorites. Um, you can, I think you can tell us what they are. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love, uh, Zio skin health. I love their, um, their retinol. They have a, a 0.5 that, well, it's called wrinkle plus texture repair. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, patients can really tolerate it and they get great results with it. I have patients that come in all the time saying, hey, you know, I love that retinol. It's the first retinol I was able to tolerate and actually use on a regular basis. Um, another great one is Skin Medica really has some great retinols. Okay. Um, and they have a variety, the 0 0.25, the 5, and then the 1.0. So... Um, They've been in the game a long time, so I just feel like patients who get on the retinols from those companies, I mean, there's other companies, of course, that are great, um, but personally, the feedback I get from patients, I kind of steer them towards those uh, retinols. Well, that is that is super helpful. Before we uh, switch topics to technologies, do you guys have any other questions about skincare or specific things you want Nina to answer? Yeah, I was going to ask about sure. um, sunscreen. Great. So there are a lot of different types of sunscreens with different chemicals and so forth. So what do you recommend for patients and also um, patients with kids? So they're always like, well, should I use this type of sunscreen? It has this in it. I just think the broad, what are your recommendations? broad spectrum sunscreens. Um, and for kids, I always like using the physical sunscreens for kids. Uh, it's not a chemical. So you know, if they have sensitive skin, we're not causing any kind of irritation. You want to be careful with kids also, because you know, they're going to be running around. Uh, if they're at the beach, you want to make sure that sunscreen doesn't burn their eyes. You know, you're not getting that, uh, you know, where they're sweating and it's running into their eyes. Um, yes. So physical meaning like a yes. zinc or a yeah. titanium oxide. <laughs> which I think a lot of adults don't like because it leaves your face right, kind of chalky know, they've and come like such pasty. a long way with sunscreens. Now uh, they have a light tint. The big thing right now is there's light tints in most every skincare line with their sunscreens. So, um, you know, you can put it on and you're not getting that white effect that we used to get. Um, my husband's a perfect example. He's a big fisherman and we've tried it every sunscreen um because of that reason because he has lighter skin type and you put it on and you could see him a mile away right that mm -hmm. white face so i got him on a lighter tint sunscreen um nothing that's going to stain his fishing shirt um but you know it, it really works for him so the tints have kind of taken over that uh white look to the skin that we all know very well so, yeah. uh, so just, just a couple right. comments on, on sunscreen. So, you know, I, I have two little ones, ages seven and nine, and it's a fight every single day to put sunblock <laughs> on it, let alone go, go out anywhere, surfing or mountain biking or wherever. And, you know, one of the best things I, I use is um, a roll-on stick or an application stick. Um, and, you know, what, what's really frightening to me is I, I'm a – I do a tremendous amount of facial skin cancer. And one of the most common places I see skin cancer is on the eyelid. And you never sort of think as a, as a person applying sunblock 
that you need to put it on your eyelids. You say, well, I'm going to have sunglasses on, right? And what a lot of us don't understand or don't realize is, you know, sunglasses, sometimes if the, if the ambient sun gets into the lens, that's a concave effect. And that can focus the, the UV radiation right on the lower lid and right here on the medial canthus. And so what, what's, your, what's your take on applying sunblock to the eyelids? Do you, is there a specific product you recommend or how do patients do it? And you know, how do you sort of balance that burning the eye sensation with sun protection? Yeah, I mean, that's, it's a tough one. Um, you know, I definitely recommend putting it all over the skin on the lids also. Um, that's why I like the, the physical sunscreen. So it's, I feel like they don't burn as much if they do get into the eye area. Um, for kids, I would rec, I definitely recommend just all over the skin, um, eyelids, but also they came out with, uh, a powder, a powder brush for a lot of patients when you're at the beach, it's like a makeup brush and the powder comes out and it's used as a sunscreen. And that seems to help with the eye area because you can go over your eyelids, right? You can even, I mean, I'm sure you could put it on kids also have a little bit of tint on their eyes maybe, but um, it's going to help with that burning sensation. But those powders are really great too. Because when you're on the beach, you know how you're sp supposed to reapply. Well, if you're wearing a little bit of makeup out there and you have that brush, you're just applying some powder on, but it's uh -huh. given that extra little bit of sunscreen you're getting. And, and two other follow-up questions on, on sunscreen. So, um, you know, we... <clears throat> We hear a lot about uh, avobenzone, um, which is a very popular product in, in sunscreens. And my understanding is there's some data that shows that that, that uh, you know, can be absorbed into the bloodstream. We don't quite know whether or not it's a carcinogen and, you know, the difference between zinc, titanium and avobenzone. The difference between the two? Yeah. So, so like... The avobenzone products are a lot of in the less expensive sunblocks. Yeah. Um, you know, you get at CVS or whatever. The more expensive ones are sort of the mineral type of sunblocks. You know, your your thoughts on on those types and kind of what you know what you may tell patients. Well, I just feel like uh, a lot of the store bought, bought products. They're the ones that run. They're the ones that are, well, just with my experience, they seem to run a little bit more. Uh, don't last as long on the skin. They're not going to tolerate the water as well. Uh, you're sweating if you're, you know, doing sporting activities. So a lot of the more physician grade skincare products, I feel last a little longer on the, on the skin. Um, and they take into an account, you know, the eye area, um, and just longevity on the skin throughout the day. And, and how about how about the aerosol sunblocks or sunscreens that you know? Again, you know, I a lot of if you walk into CVS or Rite Aid or any drugstore, there's you know volumes of and and products that have a application. And for the for the moms out there that are taking care of young ones, you know, the fight of putting on sunblock, you know, they may say, "Well, I'm just going to spray it on, you know, and we're done." You know, kind of what what are your thoughts on that? I think if you're going to spray it on, that's great, but I think you should rub it in too because there's areas you're going to miss. So when you're spraying, I think you should maybe do a little rub on if you can. Um, I feel like every time I use one of those, I, I end up getting burned somewhere. You know? Yeah, you get yeah. that striping. Um, that's why, I mean, a lot of the aerosols, they're pretty big right now too. Um, I just say spray it on. It's great. It's quick, but rub that on too so you know that you're getting full coverage. Um, I can't tell you how many people you see on the beach and you can see it when they're laying there. There's that stripe up their back. I just want to go yeah. over and spray them. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the, uh, in the last few minutes that we had <laughs> in, in our program, I want to switch gears just a little bit and uh, talk about technology. Because um, as surgeons, we are oftentimes somewhat skeptical about some of the, the results that we can see with newer technologies that are out there. But I will say that in the last year or two, some of the things that we've been seeing with radio frequency and with some of the other technologies we're going to talk about are going to be um, are pretty impressive. So, Nina, I want to switch gears first and talk to you about radio okay. frequency and specifically your experience with it kind of over the years and what you're seeing in the newer, the newer products that are out there. 
I mean, radio frequency, we are getting terrific results with it. Um, we have um, the Morpheus 8 um, in particular that we have um, at our medical spa. So we're getting tightening, we're getting toning with the Morpheus 8 product, the radio frequency. Um, and then there's uh, also the Thermage FLX yeah. is radio frequency. So I'm going to throw up a few pictures while you're talking here. Um, can you guys see this okay? Is this uh, is this coming up, uh, Sam, Sal? Yeah. Hello? Yes, okay. it is. It is. Okay, great. So um, so you're talking about Morpheus 8. What is Morpheus 8? All I, you know, all, what, I, what I have known about is microneedling, and then all of a sudden Morpheus 8 came about. And um, these are, and these are from uh, Ultimate Skin Source, which is affiliated with uh, um, uh, Dr. Rod Rourke, and, and it's David, who, who uh, is, is his uh, nurse injector. So yeah. we've taken these from his Instagram account. When, when you asked what is Morpheus, I thought you were going to say, what is, what is the matrix? Exactly. What is, <laughs> like, I always feel kind of cheesy telling patients, hey, you need Morpheus 8. I don't know what Morpheus <laughs> 1 through 7 are. Like, what is this exactly? It's <laughs> microneedling with radio frequency. So what it is, it's a, a fractional technology, and it has uh, micro pins that actually get inserted into the skin, going down to the dermis, and it makes tiny little pinholes in the skin, which causes collagen production, tightening, toning, and it does have heat involved with it. Does it so, hurt? Um, you definitely need a numbing cream. So yeah. I wouldn't do the treatment without a topical numbing cream for about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, patients tolerate it well. So um, you, you do feel it. You know, it's not something that, you know, it's not relaxing, but patients get amazing results with it. Um, and the, you know, um, I'm, I'm just, a, um, these are some body shots. It's commonly used on the face, jowls, neck area as well. Is there anything that people need to be aware of? Let's say they get Botox and fillers on a regular basis. Is there, um, is there any contraindication to doing radio frequency treatments? Well, I think that with, uh, I would always go with the injections a few days after, um, because you can have some swelling if you're doing facial areas. Um, I always recommend, you know, one, just wait three to five days before you get your Botox injections or Dysport. Okay. Um, you know, they're really, um, with injectable fillers, I would wait a little bit longer, um, uh, because it will tend to just, uh, your filler won't last as long if you're getting the treatments and you have your filler. So you might want to go through your series of Morpheus 8 first and then go with your filler product after your series. Okay. And I've, I've also heard, um, in, you know, conversations about um, radio frequency, heat relative to cooling. So cool sculpting is something that I think most of our viewers will be familiar with, and it's been around for a while. Yeah. And now all of a sudden we're using heat to dissolve fat. And there's this new treatment, Evolve, which maybe you could tell us a little bit about, which we don't even have. It's such new technology. But the pictures right. we're seeing about it are, are pretty remarkable. Well, there's the system itself is called Evolve. And then there's three different hand pieces for the system. So there's one for tightening, one for toning. Um, the toning one is the muscle stimulation. Um, and then there's uh, tightening, toning and fat loss okay. so the heat with that hand piece with the fat loss it, it helps with the fat loss um, i'm a little bit more familiar with the toning with the muscle stimulation because we actually did a study with one of the tightening devices um for the for the muscle stimulation okay so and i think it's just for the toning end of it i think it's just like exercise you have to keep up with it so is this so the tree? So I'm going to show a couple of, of pictures here that are that are off of Instagram from a variety of different um, med spas that we are not affiliated with. Um, here's here is uh, four treatments of Evolve Tight. You can see that the patient clearly has lost some fat and has gotten some substantial skin tightening. Pretty yeah. impressive for a non-surgical treatment. Here's a patient that got four treatments of Trim and Tight. So what is Trim? I'm I'm confused by what these things are. Trim is the fat loss. Okay. So that's going to help with the fat loss. And like I said, the device is evolved, but it has three different uh, hand pieces that treat the fat, the tightening, and then the muscle stimulation. 
I'm just curious what the other two plastic surgeons think about this as a non-surgical result for treatments of a non-invasive treatment. I want, I want their feedback. Uh, it looks pretty impressive. I mean, but I have seen so many before and afters with so many devices in the past and then actually used them. And it's always, uh, you know, you can always get an amazing result with almost anything, but it's about consistency and degree of efficacy across a broad range of patients. I think that's always the proof. Sure, for sure. Uh, and I, mean, I think they have... Go ahead. Sorry. No, I just think that, you know, you have to pick the... Um the right candidate for this type of procedure. Because if they're a liposuction candidate, they're not going to get the results that they're looking for through this type of device. Liposuction, you're always going to get, um, my opinion, a better result with the liposuction. Right, right. Well, um, well you know, um, I think these are, these are fantastic results. They look really good. Um, I think, you know, a lot of companies that, um, market these products, they sort of have a little disclaimer at the bottom that says when coupled with diet and exercise. So, you know, I think um, it's, it's hard, I think, honestly, to attribute what, what you see with patient lifestyle modification and what the device actually does, just to echo what Dr. Ree was talking about. And, you know, I think for a lot of, a lot of patients out there that are young, busy professionals, they don't have the downtime uh, you know, the average mom who's taking care of young ones doesn't have the downtime to go do a full tummy tuck. And so these sort of products are very nice because they can add a little bit of extra cost body contouring without a, a major amount of downtime. Yeah, I, I would I would echo what everyone is saying. I think um, to echo what Nina is saying, I think patients need to know that technology is getting better, but surgical liposuction is still the most effective way to remove fat. That being said, to echo what Dr. Pacello was saying, there's no downtime with the majority of these procedures, and you can even work while they're being done. Like if there's Dr. Robert Whitfield, who's in Austin, uh, three treatments of uh, of Evolve, where this was, I guess, all three, the trim, the tone, and the tight. Are those the three? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, what I was particularly struck by by this was not only the fat loss, but the skin tightening that came along with it as well. So it makes me really encouraged about sort of what's possible um, with non-invasive technology. And, and it's never a substitute for diet and exercise, but in conjunction, I mean, there, there are some, some really exciting treatments that are out there. And you can also use them in combination with a lipo, right? So after liposuction, I mean, you can use, you know, the Evolve or any kind of tightening, uh, toning post-surgery. Yes, exactly. I think I think the the potentials for for actually synergy between surgery and non-invasives just allows us to get better and better results. The other thing I wanted to touch on really quickly in the in the last two minutes we have is just some of the newer um, treatments that are out there for for sun damage. And I'll I'll admit that I've always known about broadband lights and. Uh, um, as a treatment, but some of the newer stuff is a little bit confusing to me. So you mind talking about some of the newer technology for sun damage and for, for broadband light that's out there? Sure. I mean, the new, uh, the new Moxie and BBL by Cyton. Um, the Moxie, what that is, is a 1927 laser. And uh, what makes this a little bit different is that you can treat all skin types, which is a pretty amazing. Um, all skin types throughout the year. So a lot of times in the summertime, our laser treatments uh, back off a little bit because patients are getting a little bit more sun exposure. With the Moxie, there's little to no downtime. Um, it's a fractionated laser, 1927, and it just, you know, patients get great results. It's for all skin types at all ages. No. So. When you say 1927, I think our viewers aren't going to necessarily know what that means. Sorry. But, but no, no, but, but is that... Are you, what are you using it for? Are you using it to reverse aging? Are you using it to treat sun damage? Are you using it to treat pigment? Like who's who's a good candidate for a moxie? Well, it's all of the above. So uh, pigmentation, it's amazing. If you have sun damage, the moxie is great. It works with uh, fine lines and wrinkles, definitely texture of the skin. Um, it's for all ages. And it's little to no downtime. So for the patients that want a refresher, want, want to target some of that pigment, it's a really great treatment for that. You have about two to four days 
of maybe a little bit of pepper into the skin, which means just a little bit of, um, looks like you have a little bit of sand on your skin. Um, there's not a lot of downtime, a little bit of redness after, but that's about it. Um, so, and then in, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. No, no and just with the BBL, uh, the new BBL, uh, it's broadband light. A lot of patients know it as, um, IPL, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so they have the new, it's called the hero, but basically it is the BBL or IPL on steroids. So it's four times faster, three times the energy, the power, and the cooling is two times higher than the normal BBL or their normal IPL. Um, so, so it's more, is it more comfortable as a result of that too then? It's definitely more comfortable. Um, I was actually treated on my legs with the Hero, and it was definitely very comfortable. Um, it's nice, it's quick, it's fast, and they use a gliding motion instead of just pulsing it, um, you know, while, during the treatment. So anyone that's had a BBL or IPL, you know, it's a pulse, and they use a, a cool crystal to treat. This is just gliding, almost like you're painting over the area. And I, I understand that you can do the Moxie all year long. The broadband light treatment, is that something you can also do all year round? Uh, I'd be a little bit more cautious with the, the BBL. Um, if somebody has a little bit more pigment to the skin, um, if they've had some recent sun exposure, that hasn't changed. So you want to be a little bit more cautious with that. Okay. Well, that's a lot of information. We just threw it, everybody. So <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate you uh, spending a few minutes with us on Sunday morning to help with that. Um, do you guys have any questions about follow up about this new technology before we sign off? No, that was fantastic. I learned a lot, and uh, I am very interested to see as these uh, new technologies continue to grow and evolve. It's very impressive. I think if you look at the technology of these products from, say, 10 years ago to now, you can definitely see just how much more impactful they are. Uh, and again, this is not something that most plastic surgeons that we, um, we have to keep up with this stuff because it's not stuff that we got very much of in training and whatever we learned back then was fairly outdated. And I'm very glad we have specialists like Nina to sort of help uh, guide us with this, uh, with this technology. Thank you. Right. Nina, thank you again so much. And uh, it was great uh, being here. Thank you very much. And with that, I guess we'll call it a show. Gentlemen, see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.